ladies and gentlemen, to the MCD FNL Footy Show for another week. Proudly brought to you, as always, by Bendigo Bank, Maryborough, the fantastic naming rights partners of the league. Get in there and have a chat to them if you've got any financing that needs to happen. If you just want to open up an everyday bank account for you, your family, or your business, get in and have a chat with Kim and the team, and they'll look after you straight away. Great to be here once again. Sean Kelly's my name. As always, sitting in the host chair and joining me once again is my co-host, Sam Gowers. Sam, welcome to the show again, mate. Thanks, mate. Always happy to be here alongside you. Always glad to have you here alongside me as well, because if you're not here, then normally we've got somebody that doesn't quite know as much as you, and it makes for a worse show. Yeah, and they're just not as good looking either, mate. I'll let you I'll let you out there be the judge of that one. I'm just going to stay completely out of that. We're going to jump straight into the talking points for the last week in the MCD FNL. And the first thing we're going to talk about is goals. Goals win games. Goals get the girls. And there has been an influx of goals in the MCD FNL this season, and especially in the last week because we had some huge bags highlighted by Cody Driscoll from Navarre dropping in a lazy 15 on the weekend. Beat Talbot three times over, all on his own. Yeah, upstaging older brother Ash as well. Mm. Ash would have been pretty happy uh, with seven. But... Ash would have been pretty happy that they gave him the 15 initially on Saturday night. And I've looked and said, geez, Ash had a big one. And someone's told me no, it was actually Cody. So the, young, the younger Driscoll's up and about. Probably not happy that it got changed back, actually, yes, to his younger correct. brother. But we had some other big hauls on the weekend as well. We did. Sean, Jason Hunt from Natty Alibur slotting home at eight. Yep. And big Josh Brown from up at Royal Park. He's in some form seven, at the moment, too. In some serious form. So we've got Cody Driscoll with yep. 17 goals and Jason Hunt with 17 goals locked at the top of the leaderboard. And I think Brownie's just one behind them as well, isn't exactly he? Exactly right. So it's been a year for big bags of goals. There's some interesting names on the goals leaderboard as we just saw as well. Good to see Trentham with a couple of blokes up in the leading goal kickers as well. Talking point number two is Junior Interleague being played tonight. So if you're doing nothing tonight, get out to Royal Carisbrook Reserve and check out our Junior Interleague sides starting at 6.35pm with the under four taking on the Central Highlands Footy League in their annual challenge matches and love to see as many people as we can get out and getting out there Sammy and supporting the future of the MCDFL. Yeah certainly some of the uh, MCDFL's best young talent on show out there for sure. Two games being played under 14s and under 16s again starting at 6.35pm tonight out at Carisbrook so get out there and support our young MCDFL footballers. Talking point number three for this weekend of course this weekend is Mother's Day throughout the well throughout Australia, not just throughout the MCD FNL, but we wanted to say a big thank you to all of the mothers that are involved within our football and netball clubs. Obviously the ones that play on the netball course, but also the ones that are helping out, that are volunteering, that are in the canteens, that are on committees, or just the ones that get along and drive their sons and daughters to the football and the netball every week. Thank you very much. Without you, our clubs and our league don't run. So with Mother's Day this week, Sammy, we thought we'd throw a bit of a shout out to the mothers and I suppose appreciate them for all of the hard work they do in helping our league be run so successfully. Yeah, and there's certainly lots of mums out there, Sean, behind the scenes at clubs. So yes, we do say a big thank you to the mums and I'm sure they'll be happy that there's no football or netball this Sunday that we had a their feet up. Yep, very much so. The crowd spoke a couple of years ago when we did have the regular Sunday games and they said nothing on Mother's Day, please. So we said not a problem at all. And I think second year in a row where we've been completely Mother's Day free. Yeah, I'm sure uh, all the footballers and netballers out there will be able to look after their mums instead. Be very good for me as well because I'm making the three hour round, uh, the six hour sorry round trip to go down and see my mum and have lunch on Mother's Day. Let's jump straight into the footy for this week, though round four because there's some juicy, juicy games coming up this weekend. Harcourt on the got got a bit of a touch up last week to Carisbrook. They'll travel out to Avoca this week and start pretty warm favourites to get themselves back on the winners list at the Avoca Public Park. Sammy? Yeah, certainly Harcourt have probably started the season a little bit up and down, but they'll be confident of getting a win over the winless Avoca this weekend, and I'm going to back the Lions. To yeah, get the job Lions, done easy. Lions for me as well. Avoca just that little bit off the boil this year, and it's not, not quite as competitive as what they'd like to be, but I'm sure Jamie Brody's doing everything in his power to turn that around. Yeah, plenty of new players out at Avoca this year as well, so we know it takes a while for them to gel together. Natty Bialba taking on Denali at Natty Yellick Reserve this week. And could this possibly be a danger game for the Swans? They're on they're on they're in form at the moment. They're on fire, they're doing very, very nicely. But so are Denali. 90 odd point win on the weekend up against Mold and two and one at the moment, going along quite nicely. And all the doomsday that we heard six weeks ago completely forgotten because the Eagles are flying. There's no doubt about that. But then again, so are your Swannies. 
Absolutely a danger game for Natty. Sean, uh, if you had a said this at the start of the season that it was a danger game against the Nolly people would have thought you had rocks in your head mm. but like you said the Eagles have kicked off the season very nicely I don't back Natty but only just yeah Natty for mine as well as long as they come with the right mindset they can't just think oh it's just a Nolly who haven't won haven't won much footy previously because if they do that they're going to get tipped over there's no doubt about that because Denali are a serious side this year yeah absolutely and Natty would be happy to have Jared Bates and Jack Kennedy back in their lineup for this one for sure a very handy couple of blokes to come back into the lineup as well Molden take on Lexton this week out at Molden the Dons another team that haven't started the season as well as what they would have liked but Lexton Got on the winners list last week, up and about uh, Matty Brown's boys and should be able to make it two in a row this weekend. Yeah, we know Lexton didn't kick off the season uh, like they probably wanted to, but I'm going to back them to make it win number two this weekend. A yeah, good win up against Trentham last week, whereas Molden on the receiving end of some business from Denali. Navarre taking on the Meribah Rovers. This is not the assignment that the Meribah Rovers wanted to see after look, the start of the season that they probably wouldn't have been expecting. Their zip three... They're going to go zip four this weekend because Navarre are just in another stratosphere at the moment. Yeah, polar opposites these two last weekend. Navarre had a 150-something point mm. win over Tolbert, whereas Meribah Rovers would have been very disappointed with their 140-something point loss to arch rivals. You line World. that up, this could potentially be a 300-point game. It could be. Uh, for Rovers' yeah. sake, I hope not, no, but uh, obviously you have to back Navarre. One of the things that stood out for me on the weekend, I got given a stat from the navarre Tolbert game last weekend, that Navarre went inside 50 49 times for the game, which isn't a lot in footy these days. They scored on 41 of those 49 times. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's an astonishing statistic, but it just shows you how much goal-kicking firepower and Navarre do have up mm. forward now. Uh, Cody Driscoll obviously kicked 15, joining Ash Driscoll up there. It Riley Bibby. Two before that. The Slorax. Yep. You know, they've got goal-kicking firepower all over the place. And they there. are on fire and they will win this one. And I think that takes them to about 45 in a row, I believe, if they win this one. I'll do a count on it before next week's show, just to make sure we're 100% right, because it's an easy count back. It's be able to do it. I can't do it off the top of my head right now because I'm too much concentrating on what I'm doing here. But we'll have it for next week because obviously... We're looking forward to them being able to get into a position where they might be able to raise the bat for a half century in a few weeks. Yeah, and the uh, Grasshopper's winning streak getting a little bit of mainstream media coverage during the week, uh, popping up in the Age newspaper. Yep. If you haven't had a look, get online and read about Navarre. Get around to www.theage.com.au. Just do a search for Navarre. A really good story being written by The Age. And, of course, The Weekly Times also has the longest winning streaks every week in their paper as well. So just grab a copy of that if you can't wait a week before us to verify it. And they'll let you know exactly what's happening with the Hoppers. Speaking of what's happening, Newstead taking on Royal Park at Newstead this week. This is going to be an absolute ripper of a game between two sides that are in a pretty good patch of form at the moment and both had very, very strong wins last weekend. Yeah, they certainly did. Royal Park kicked off the season, struggled a little bit against Denali and we thought maybe the Tigers had gone backwards. Mm. But last weekend, that big win over Meribah Rovers proved that they're the real deal this season. Great matchup this, and I'm going to go with the Roos because it's their home turf. Yeah, look, I'm also tempted to go with Newstead as well. They are flying at the moment, but there's just something about Royal Park that they're up and about now. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I know how much work they did over the pre-season. You saw about six weeks ago in the season preview video that we did, Royal, uh, Royal Park coach AJ Beach talking about how much work his team had put in. They're just going to get better as the season goes on, and it, not quite. I stopped short of calling this an upset because Newstead are in great form at the moment, absolutely flying, and everything points to a Newstead victory. But I'm going with Royal Park. I've just got a gut feeling that they will go there, they'll get this done, and they'll make a bit of a statement. Yeah, it's definitely a hard one to tip, Sean. Probably the hardest match of the round, I think, to tip. It is indeed. Carrisbrook taking on Campbell's Creek at Royal Carrisbrook this Saturday. The Brook up and about on the weekend, got their first win for the season. Campbell's Creek, unfortunately, on the end of a little bit of work as well, I believe, from Newstead. So Carisbrook now get that confidence that they probably needed after a tough first couple of rounds. They should go in pretty confident of a win here. Yeah, they'll go into 
uh, this match warm favourites, Sean, and rightly so. I'm going to back the Brookers to get the job done. Uh, they will be missing Jaden Hind for a couple of weeks, though. Got a hand injury that's going to keep him on the sidelines. Hind with a hand, that is no good at all, but it's good for alliteration, so we'll just keep on that one. Good to see Brady Neal in the interleague squad as well. They were calling him Brady Bowen last year with all these ruck efforts, and now Jacko's back, still going along very, very nicely. Any word on Big Nath on the weekend? No, I haven't had a look at Big Nath's stats. He's uh, keeping a low profile at the he's, moment. He's keeping a low profile and tipping not much happened because if something happens, he's normally on the blower pretty quickly. And you'll know all about it on here if something does happen. You will indeed. The last game for the round and arguably the match of the round as well up against that Newstead Royal Park game. Trentham taking on Talbot and Twilight fixed up at Trentham. That'll sort the men from the boys now that we've hit May and things are just starting to get that little bit colder. Talbot going okay at the moment. Trentham going okay as well. This will be a really, really good game. How much of an impact does the weather make on this? We know that Talbot went out there at a similar time last year, played a game under lights, got rolled over in a game that we expect them to win. They didn't do it. The weather is a factor at Trentham. It always is because no matter what the degrees are, no matter what it is in Miraborough or Natty or Evoke or anywhere like that, it's always two or three degrees colder in Trentham gets in people's heads. Yeah, no one likes going to Trenton to play. No hiding that fact, especially at night under lights gets even chillier. I'm going to back Tolbert to bounce back from that heavy loss to Navarre last week. Uh, your mate Matt Smith, yes. the Dallas Buyers, will have been into the boys on the track this week, I think, and had them primed to knock off the Saints. That being said, I'm actually tipping the Saints. They are going very nicely at the moment. They probably don't mind too much that nobody likes going out there because that gives them a real fortress at home. Having said that, they're very proud of their venue, and quite rightly so, because they put a lot into it to make it a very warm, hospitable place, which it is. And their football's going okay at the moment. Just, I think it was three goals against Lexton last weekend, which is a huge improvement on where they've been in past years. I think they can do it at home this weekend in the twilight against Tolbert and get their second win for the season. It's the MCD FNL Footy Show for another week. Sammy, good job by you today, mate. Well done. Short and sharp, just how we like it. Exactly right. Thank you for joining us once again on the MCD FNL Footy Show. Brought to you, of course, by Bendigo Bank in Maribor. We'll be back again next week with everything happening from around your favourite league, the Maribor Castlemaine District Football and Netball League.